Hello, this is Dr. Eric Bricker, and thank you for watching A Healthcare Z. Today's topic is Dr. Peter Pronovos. Absolutely someone you need to know if you work in healthcare. Now, he is the Chief Transformation Officer at the University Hospital System in Cleveland, which is associated with the Medical School for Case Western Reserve University. It's sort of the other major health system in Cleveland other than the Cleveland Clinic. And previously, um, Dr. Pronovo spent the vast majority of his time, and kind of where I knew him from, was at Johns Hopkins. So when I was a resident there, he was a senior attending physician in anesthesiology. I did not know him personally, but he was sort of very famous, not only within Johns Hopkins, but also nationwide, and that he did incredible research about um, hospital acquired infections from central lines and he actually did a study on how to dramatically reduce infections from central lines uh, and it is a process that was used at Hopkins, it's used across the country today. It has probably saved tens of thousands of lives. Dr. Provost has like over 800 peer-reviewed articles. The reason I'm talking about him today is because he's like the doctor's doctor. I mean, he is incredibly competent, he's incredibly well-respected, and in my opinion, he absolutely puts the patient first. So let's hear what he has to say about his vision for healthcare in the future. And he laid that out in a recent blog post, which he refers to as the Healthcare Value Alliance. And he says a few key things that we're going to go over. So first and foremost, he says that, look, that innovation and change in healthcare needs to be health system led. He doesn't say health insurance carrier led. He doesn't say employer led. He doesn't say government led. He said that because the hospital systems and the doctors and the healthcare providers know the most and have the most intimate relationship with care and the cost of care, that it really needs to be led by them. So that, that in and of itself is a significant statement on his part. Okay, next, he says, look, there have been barriers to why doctors and hospitals have like not been leading the charge. And here are the barriers that he points out. One. He says there's no systems engineering. He's like, look, other industries have embraced systems engineering, and healthcare basically has not. Next up, there are just poor management structures within hospitals and health systems. He's calling out the admin. What's another name for management? The administration. Guess what? He's calling out the administration. Next up, there's really lack of data infrastructure. He essentially says that healthcare hasn't really changed in the last 20 years. So all this work that's been done in healthcare IT, he's like, look, it really hasn't gotten us where we need to be. It really hasn't. It's not there. Next, he says, look, fee for service. He says the payment mechanism in America itself is a barrier. Okay? A Healthcare Z has been saying that for a long time. So here you have the doctor of doctors saying, look, fee-for-service is a big part of the problem. Okay, next up, there is a bad innovation ecosystem. Look, he serves on the board or is involved in a very prominent healthcare venture capital firm. He's like, look, the coordination between venture capital and like healthcare systems right now is horrible. Like, it's not where it needs to be. So here are the barriers that he points out. Now he says, look, this healthcare value alliance it needs, to, it needs to have three integral pieces. He says, piece number one is, look, they need to own it. Okay, essentially the doctors and the hospitals, they need to own it. They need to stop pointing the fingers at other people and say, look, like Michael Jordan said in the 90s, look, I got the ball, I'm going to take it, and I'm going to go to the hoop. Okay, he's essentially saying, we're going to the hoop. Next up, he says, look, there needs to be a venture fund that the hospitals and the doctors themselves invest in, and then those doctors and hospitals need to test out the solutions. He's like, there needs to be a much more intimate relationship between the quote-unquote venture funding of these new innovations and the actual testing of these implementations. Right now, it's totally separate, and it totally doesn't work. Okay, finally, he says, look, the health system themselves need to own the social determinants of health. None of this like, well, it's outside of the hospital, so we, you know, that's, that's, you know, quote unquote, outside our swimming lane. He's like, enough of that. We as the hospital system, we need to own the social determinants of health. We need to take that as part of our responsibility. Okay, fantastic. He boils it down to five specific, he calls them deliverables, or outputs that need to come from his vision, okay? So they are, one, there needs to be value-based healthcare for all. Look, he just comes out and says, look, there does need to be healthcare for all. 
Okay, then call it Medicare for all. Calls it health care for all. Two, he says, look, there needs to be a competitive market. He is not, in other words, part of his vision is not for a wholesale government takeover of medicine. Okay, so for, I mean, obviously people fall on different sides of this. There are physicians and people in the business community and individual patients who say that we should. There are other people that say that we shouldn't. You know, he's taking a stand and he says, look, there is a place for the competitive market in healthcare. Okay, number three, he says there has to be a way to address inequality. The inequality in healthcare needs to be a central part of what the health system delivers on. In other words, all this, you know, pushing forward and, you know, new innovations and immunotherapy and percutaneous valve replacements, pushing on, he's like, look, we got to bring everybody along with us. We can't just do this cutting edge, bleeding edge stuff. We got to bring everybody along with us. Okay. Then he says, look, we, he, he like calls out the financial goal right up front. He says, look, we need to decrease the spend of healthcare America by 20% in the next five years. So he just, look, other people are saying, okay, are, you know, the, listen, the main, the editor in chief of the Journal of the American Medical Association has said in a podcast that, you know, it's debatable as to whether or not healthcare costs are too high. So, you know, Dr. Pronos is coming out and saying, look, healthcare costs are too high. They need to go down by a fifth in five years. Okay. And then finally, he says, look, there needs to be transparent reporting, right? So this is where transparency is essentially like mom and apple pie. And he's saying, look, the way that hospital systems are set up right now, they are not transparent and they need to be. So what's my point for today? My point for today is that many of these themes we have talked about on A Healthcare Z many times, and I'm just a guy with a whiteboard. But here you have Dr. Peter Pronovost, one of the most well-respected and prominent physicians in America, who has a vision, and I think it's important for all of us in healthcare to understand what that vision is. And thank you for watching A Healthcare Z.